Good morning, church. Welcome to worship. This is Sunday, January the 23rd, 2022. This is the third Sunday in the season of Epiphany, and this is Our Savior Lutheran Church. I am Pastor Bob Fritsch, and I welcome each and every one of you to worship on whatever day you might be watching and wherever you might be watching from. It is always good to worship God any day. At the moment, our worship is online only. We hope to be back in the building and online on Ash Wednesday, March the 2nd. But for now, we are 100% virtual, and you know what, that's okay. So now, let's get back to worship as we begin with, what else? A word of prayer. Let us pray. Lord God, you have given us your holy scriptures, written for the nourishment and the growth of your people. As we gather for worship this day, may we hear those words, read them, mark them, learn them, and inwardly digest them, that we may move forward into an unknown future, holding fast to your promises. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, our opening hymn for this day, Here I Am to Worship. Step down into darkness Open my eyes, let me see Beauty that made this heart adore you Hope of a life spent with you Here I am to worship
Good morning, church. Today is the third Sunday of Epiphany season. Our reading from the fourth chapter of Luke's Gospel recalls the beginning of Jesus' ministry. As he visits his hometown of Nazareth, here is today's lesson. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee. And a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of the sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Here ends today's gospel lesson. Since I really do not like winter, not even one tiny bit, I thought it might be time for a season of epiphany, summertime story. So let me go up here for a minute, let me sit down for a bit, and share that story with you. Way back, way back, before I was old enough to get a summer job, from the day school was over in June, to the day before school started up in September, I was at the swimming pool, the community swimming pool in Emmaus, Pennsylvania. I loved swimming. I loved hanging out. My friends and I went each and every day, even when it rained, we were at the pool. Now, our community pool was like every other swimming pool. It had a deep end and it had a shallow end. Now, my friends and I, we like to swim in the deep end. We didn't like it too much in the shallow end. Why, you might ask? Well, <clears throat> let me tell you why. There was way too much drama in the shallow end. It was more crowded. The less experienced swimmers stayed in the shallow end because they, they really didn't want to learn how to swim, and so they stayed in the less deep water. And what did those shallow enders do all day? Well, they had water battles. They made a lot of noise. They cried a lot. They splashed a lot. Did I mention they made a lot of noise? In fact, pretty much all the noise was coming from the shallow end. I'm going to say that again. Pretty much all the noise was coming from the shallow end. And the shallow end was where all the poop accidents happened. But back in the deep end were the experienced swimmers. Swimmers with discipline, swimmers with confidence, swimmers who were ready to swim, swimmers who were prepared. There was no yelling, no splashing, no water battles, no crying, <laughs> and perhaps most importantly, no poop. Now, if you ever watch the swimming events at the Olympics, when you watch real swimmers, swimmers like Michael Phelps or in last year's Olympics, Katie Ledecky, you saw swimmers who were definitely deep end swimmers. They were trained, they were disciplined. They hardly made any waves when they swim. 
They slice through the water, smooth and quiet. Kind of how life should be. Smooth, quiet, no noise, and no poop. So in other words, here's what we have. We have the shallow end, and we have the deep end. And we have a world of difference in between. And somehow, somehow that brings us nicely to our gospel lesson for today. Because in our gospel lesson this morning, Jesus walks into the synagogue in his hometown of Nazareth. He is expecting to swim with the scholars. He's expecting some deep end conversations with the experienced swimmers. Jesus is expecting to have an intelligent conversation with the scribes about the scriptures. He's expecting to literally jump in to the deep end. And Jesus tells them he has come to proclaim release to the captives, good news to the poor. He tells them that this scripture from Isaiah is fulfilled in their hearing. Let's swim, he says. Let's go into the deep end together, you and me, folks. But instead, instead he ends up where? He ends up in the shallow end with the sharks. The sharks who are kicking and splashing around in the shallow end. The last thing, the last thing these scribes, these scholars wanted to hear was release to the captives. The last thing they wanted to hear was good news to anyone but themselves. And if you continue into next week's gospel lesson, there is a, a battle brewing, more splashing, more noise. And they ask the question, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And what do they do next? They throw Jesus out. Not only out of the synagogue, but out of town. They throw the Son of God into the outer darkness. You see, when Jesus said he came to proclaim good news, the religious leaders, well, they just wanted to splash around in the shallow end of the pool. They just wanted to stay where they were, splashing, making noise and not really getting anywhere. They wanted to throw him out because Jesus wanted them to move. He wanted them to move into the deeper water. But the problem was they didn't realize there was a problem. They didn't realize they were stuck. They didn't realize that they were the ones held captive. They didn't realize that they were the ones who were blind. They didn't realize that they were the ones who were poor. And it is absolutely no different in our lives right now. Most of the noise, most of the noise right now comes from the shallow end. Most of the waves come from the shallow end. Now, of course, I could make this very easily into a political sermon because the state of American politics is definitely split between those who want to swim and those who want to splash around in the poop. But I wouldn't dare make that comparison, would I? So instead, instead, I'm gonna dig around in my musical roots. In 1974, a band out of England called Jethro Tull released an album that contained the song, Skating Away. The main line in this song was, skating away on the thin ice of a new day. I'm gonna say that again because it's where I feel I am every morning, skating away on the thin ice of a new day. And I think, I think it's a good image for all of us because every day feels like we are venturing out on the thin ice, precariously balancing life as we knew it and the fa frail and fragile future that lies ahead. Skating away on the thin ice every day into an, an unknown future and these days are rather dangerous future and so the question is how do we venture out onto the thin ice of a new day how do we navigate the noise and the poop filled waters that surround us well i think our lesson tells us today our lesson tells us that you gotta go to the deep end you got to dig deeper, study more, learn more, grow more. For you see, a shallow faith keeps you on the shore. 
A shallow faith does not allow you to move forward, to move past the, the squawkers and the squeakers into a new day. You know, in our world today, you will find a lot of people talking, but you'll also find very few people swimming in the deep end. And you will find that most of the noise is coming from the shallow end. Lots of water battles, lots of splashing, and might I even say, most days, a whole lot of poop, but not much happening. The ones making the most noise are those with the shallow faith. The ones making the most noise are the ones who have all the answers, at least they think. The ones who simply throw their hands up and tell me that the world is about to end. Those are the shallow faith people. But you know what? Throwing our hands up in despair is not the answer. Faith is. Faith is what's going to get us through this battle we are in. The problem is a whole lot of us are stuck in the noisy, wavy, tumultuous, shallow end of the pool of life and the shallow end of the pool of faith. Now, I need to be clear. This doesn't mean everything is perfect in the deep end. Not at all. But folks in the deep end have what? Folks in the deep end have the stamina to hold on in the storms of life. Folks in the deep end have the endurance to go the distance. Folks in the deep end, well, they have the strength to run the race that is set before them. They have faith. Faith that even if the waves come up, the water will not consume them. And it's just not that way in the shallow end, is it? Here's a statistic for you today. You might not realize this, but it is true. It's not a fake news kind of thing. But more people drown in the shallow end of pools than drown in the deep end. Truth, more people drown in the shallow end than drown in the deep end. Are you, are you starting to put this together yet? Folks who are stuck in the shallow end, they think they have more experience, but they don't. They think they have the discipline, but they don't. And when the waves come up for those in the shallow end, when the ice breaks, fatigue sets in and the waters of life drag them down. They think they're having fun, but they have a hard time keeping their heads above water. So if you like the noise, if you like going nowhere in the shallow end, stay there. Stay there and be captive. Stay there and be poor. If you're afraid that getting to the deep end is just too much work, that it's going to be too hard, then stay there. Be a captive. The shallow end is for you. But, but, and this is a big but, if you want to have a life of purpose, if you want to have a stronger life, a more meaningful life, if you want to have a more disciplined life, if you want to have a life that truly, truly prepares you, for those times when the waters will try to overwhelm you then, well, maybe it's time to start working your way to the deep end. No, it's not going to be easy, but oh, life is going to be so much better. You know, faith is not something we can pull out of the closet on Sunday morning and put it away by noon. It's a skill. It's a craft. It's a growing, living thing. And so we have a choice. We can sit in the shallow end, and worry and make waves about how unfair the water is? Or we can realize that life in the deep end is just plain better, stronger, and more fulfilling. That's how we begin. We begin by learning how to swim, by learning what it means to follow Jesus and not just singing about it. Start the right way. Build on a foundation. Build on a strong commitment to Jesus and see what happens. Build the foundation that is Jesus, because without that there is no substance, no power. It is all but sound and fury and a bunch of splashing around. But isn't life about more than just making splashes? You see, the real question today is this. What, what have you got to lose? What have you got to lose? Come join us in the deep end. The swimming lessons start right now. Amen. Our next musical selection is a good one for us today. He leadeth me.
Friends, as the Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, let us pray for the church, the world, and for all people who are in need. Let us pray. Lord, grant us the strength and the vision to prepare, to prepare for a deep water life, a life where we can venture out onto the thin ice of our world. Give us the tools. Give us the endurance to grow in our faith for ourselves and for others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, we pray this day for the people of Tonga and for all who have been affected by the volcano erupting in the Pacific. We also pray for the victims of the Bronx fire as they are laid to rest this week. We pray for them and for the survivors as well as the victims of the house explosion in the Bronx last week. Lord, we pray for Michelle Goh pushed in front of a subway, and we pray for those who are homeless and call the subway their homes. Lord, we pray that the scriptures might be opened, opened in our midst, and the poor and the suffering ones might be lifted up. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayers. Lord, as we remember the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. this week, may we be constantly reminded of just how much there is to do in our nation and our world. Help us all to be advocates for equality and justice for all. Lord God, we pray for those who are suffering, those waiting for mercy. Accompany those who feel abandoned. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray that you would embrace those who are ill and those who are known to us. And this day we pray especially for Lori Savitri, Anita, Agnes, Colin, Jessica, Gwen, Charles, Lillian, Elijah, and Reggie, as well as those we name before you in our hearts. May your healing hands embrace them all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now into your hands we commend all for whom we pray. Accept our prayers on behalf of a world in need. In the name of the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. And we all say together, Amen. I have but two announcements today. My first is that as case numbers here in the city of New York continue to rise, we will continue to suspend in-person worship until Ash Wednesday, March the 2nd, 2022. But we will, as always, continue to bring you worship online, Wednesday devotions online, and we hope that you will join us for all of our virtual church events. My other announcement is just a reminder that even though you may not be in church, or even though you may be watching this from all parts of the world, the financial needs of this congregation continue whether you're in the building or not. And that means that we ask, if you can, to give online. It's very easy, it's very safe and secure, but it also helps us continue this ministry to all people. We hope that you will consider giving this week uh, to this church. For now, those are my announcements. We continue now with God's benediction. May Christ, who by his incarnation has filled us with grace and truth, give you peace this epiphany season. May Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. So, even though we are not gathering in person, the sentiment always remains the same. May you and your family have a very blessed week. Please stay safe and please stay well. And now we conclude with our closing hymn for today, Blessed Be the Name. We'll see you all next Sunday or Wednesday night for devotions. You all take care now.
should be Blessed be your name Blessed be your name On the road marked with suffering Oh, there's pain in the offering Blessed be your name Every blessing you pour out I turn back to praise When the darkness closes in Lord, still I will say Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your name Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your glorious name Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your name Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your glorious name Thank you.